morning, my name is Stephanie Caldwell and I'm the President and CEO of the Ventura Chamber of Commerce. I would like to welcome you all to our first candidate forum of 2016 election cycle. And now I would like to turn it over to our moderator today, James Pereiro. James is an attorney with Myers, Witters, Gibson, Jones, and Feingold. And he is also the 2016 board chair for the chamber. He also serves on the chamber PAC. And so for those reasons, we have selected him to moderate the panel today. And he's gonna to explain to you a little bit more about the uh, rules for this morning's event. Great, thank you, Stephanie. So here's how this is gonna work this morning. The candidates have just had their pregame coin toss and Steve Bennett was the winner of the coin toss. So that means Steve had the opportunity to pick who spoke first this morning. And he is going to go first and then he's, he's gonna have five minutes to speak. Then after that, uh, Dave Brown is going to have five minutes to speak. And then we are going to have questions, which were prepared in advance and provided to the candidates. They've had an opportunity to reflect on these prior to this morning's event. And they will each have two minutes to answer each of the questions. And they will alternate who goes first with respect to each question. And then depending on time after that, we will have questions from members of the audience. Uh, and at that time, I'll invite whoever would like to ask a question to come up here to the mic, ask the question, and then the candidates will each again have two minutes to answer the question. And then we'll conclude with closing remarks, which again will be five minutes for each candidate. And on the closing side, Dave will go first and Steve will finish. Are we ready with the timers? Okay, Jessica Perkins is helping us keep track of time this morning. I'll remind the candidates that, uh, uh, don't be offended, but I will interrupt if you if you go on. We, we've got a lot of ground we want to cover this morning. Sure the timer. Yes. This is the timer right there. Yeah, the timer will be right here. Jessica, raise your hand. I'm going to show the sign so they know where to look. Can you see them from where you are with the lights? <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. You ready? Okay, Steve. Well, thank you very much. Um, we have five minutes, and we've been asked to both give, our, give a bio and try to give an overview of the campaign. Uh, that's a lot to do, so pardon me for speaking quickly. Um, first of all, I... I things I'd like to fill in regarding my bio. Uh, I went to Brown University. I played football there. I graduated with a degree in honors in economics. I was fortunate to get to coach college football for a few years after that. Uh, and I also opened the first windsurfing franchise east of the Mississippi River. Um, but on a visit out here to Ventura County, I met my wife and the city of Ventura. Both of those were compelling reasons, my wife more compelling, um, and she's right here in the audience, uh, to move west, young man, and I came out here at the tender age of 26. Uh, I started teaching at Nordoff High School, Economics, United States History, um, and as I became more and more embedded in the community, I became concerned that we were having local decisions being made uh, that weren't giving us consistent, good local government, uh, and that the core values of the citizens of Ventura and Ventura County were not being reflected in the decisions of local government and local government officials. Uh, so I decided to run and get involved in local government. And the, my concern was particularly at the Ventura County level. Um, at the Ventura County level, um, Ventura County government, I think, had been captured by some powerful, narrow, special interest. And as a result, we had budgeting by formula that was literally sending the county down the road to, to, to bankruptcy. We were spending more each year on ongoing expenses than we were taking in in ongoing revenues. We were dipping into our uh, reserves. And as a result of that, just about the time that uh, I was elected reserves, the Rainy Day Reserve Fund had fallen to zero. Uh, we had had repeated bond rating downgrades. Um, and uh, so I... I launched into a Don Quixote sort of campaign at that point in time uh, because I was willing to take on and be very clear about taking on uh, those people that were pushing for budgeting by formula, those narrow interests that were also pushing for uh, urban sprawl projects that out, out on the Oxnard Plain, et cetera, that people clearly didn't want and, and, and really we didn't need to uh, have, even be spending all this local government time on those things. And at the same time, county government had also refused to pass any campaign contribution limits at all. So when I was running, uh, campaign candidates were able to accept unlimited contributions. And 
So I said, if you want to bring good government, uh, you have to actually run your campaigns differently. I voluntarily limited my campaign contributions to $500, even though one of my opponents accepted contributions as large as $40,000 from some contributors. I, I told the sheriff and the district attorney I was going to challenge the uh, funding by formula that was causing the county to spend more uh, in ongoing expenses than uh, we had in, in ongoing revenue. Uh, so I tried to be really clear, and something, uh, something fortunate happened, I was elected, and I was elected with a mandate, a mandate to do something. Uh, and as a result, I did have the ability, and almost all of them were 3-2 votes, but because I had been clear, I think I had the moral authority to be able to push through reforms of our budgeting, uh, push through uh, campaign contribution limits on a 3-2 vote, and as a result, our reserves have grown from 0% of the budget to 13% of the budget today. Uh, we no longer, we have a policy, no ongoing expense uh, can be engaged without an ongoing revenue source. Uh, we have campaign contribution limit law in there, one of the toughest in the state. No longer can people give unlimited contributions. We had one candidate in 2002 uh, receive a $90,000 contribution from one person, and it was somebody that was going to be proposing an, an urban sprawl project. So I really have a passion for good government, and my concern and the overview I'd like to throw uh, out there regarding this election is that um, I, I know that there's a lot been made that it's time for a change. I'm concerned that the change that's being proposed is a change for us to go back to that old guard being in charge. And the reason I feel that way is that there are a number of things that have happened. Uh, back in my first campaign, my opponents refused to debate against the League of Women Voters, I mean, at, at a League of Women Voters forum. Um, my opponent has refused to, to engage in that gold standard of debate. Um, things were always kept vague. Uh, it would be very important for us. At the Rotary, uh, my opponent wouldn't say whether he supported the SOAR initiative or the Sustain VC initiative. Um, we, we, we do not need to have vagueness. We need to have really clear positions in terms of where we stand so the voters have a clear choice. Thank you very much. Dave. Can I stand? You may. All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Dave Crow. I'm running for county supervisor, and I uh, want to thank the chamber for setting this up. This is the first forum I have ever attended. I'm a business guy, so I really appreciate uh, booking it in a comedy club <laughs> at 7.30 in the morning. So um, my background is quite a bit different from Steve's. Um, I came up through the private sector. I have a degree in accounting. I earned that after serving four years in the Air Force during the Vietnam War. Uh, my first job was here in Ventura at a local company as a manufacturing company on the avenue. They manufactured uh, uh, subsea drilling equipment for the oil patch. I uh, worked there for five, six years in their corporate accounting office. That closed. Uh, jobs left the county. So I moved over to a job in Oxnard, a uh, place, uh, it was a division of or a, a subsidiary of an aerospace uh, supplier. Uh, great jobs. A lot of opportunities, and we supplied parts for the MX missile and the uh, space shuttle. And that, uh, you know, I was assistant controller there, and uh, that for various reasons that company closed. I didn't know if it was me following my career around. So I, my next job was in ag. Uh, so a very important industry here in Ventura County. I worked 17 years uh, at uh, Dole Fresh Vegetables. I was a vice president and product manager there. I managed the entire Oxnard deal, uh, which uh, comprised celery, broccoli, strawberries, the whole thing. And I also ran a company for Dole in Salinas. Uh, we manufactured the mini carrots. So I, was a, I got a lot of exposure in a lot of very important businesses in Ventura County, things that are very, very important to this economy. Um, I retired about seven, seven years ago, uh, started doing volunteer work. I'm an officer with the American Legion here in Ventura. Uh, we do a lot of donations to help the homeless. Uh, we, we help uh, uh, have our uh, project understanding and a few of those groups. It's very effective. And I'm also the chairman of the Ventura County Taxpayers Association. Now, what Steve, Steve said is correct. County government is very healthy. You know, when he started, uh, there were a lot of issues. And, and the financial statements of the county government it, it looks really, really good. My concern is the county. What we're doing is, I think, the wrong approach toward businesses. 
And if you ask a person, well, why are you running for office? You know, you gotta be able to say, why are you running for office? Um, I, I look at this like a business person would. You know, when you're in business, you've got a lot of metrics that you kind of look at your business, whether it's, you know, uh, PE ratios, earnings per share, market share, profitability, whatever. I, I honed in on one statistic uh, in the county of Ventura, and this is supplied by a local economist, and I don't have a PowerPoint or anything, but I do have one chart that I would like to show you. Now, let me, yeah, you know, this is, kind of go slow on this, but this is really a significant chart. You know, it's kind of like a bell-shaped chart. And here we have years across the bottom, you know, to kind of get your kind of situated, starting with 1995 through the year 2015. And all these little green bars here, and there's a black line, which I'll explain. What this represents, this, this bell-shaped chart, is population. Okay, this, this is number of people. And significantly, what this represents is your core working group age. Age 30 to 54, okay? So you see it going up with the normal population. It peaked and it started dropping. It didn't just drop one year. It's been dropping every single year since the year 2003. Now this is significant. Because when you look at the total population of Ventura County, the total population is increasing slightly, as you would expect. But this key group is doing something that I don't believe any other county in the state of California is experiencing. I believe the policies at the county of Ventura are crushing jobs, forcing people in this age group to give up and leave. And this is a slow-moving disaster. And this is something we have to really be aware of. And I understand that uh, we've got a very, very healthy county government. My concern is the base that supplies the money to run our county government. So this is really kind of an indication. And I think if you're an executive running a corporation or even a football coach, you know, this is like a losing, you know, a losing trend. And it's something we've got to seriously take a look. What is causing? all of our young people to leave this county and never come back. So this is one of the things I'm running on, and it is jobs. I am running, was that 10 seconds or one minute? Stop, okay. <laughs> all right. Thanks Dave, that's uh, the end of your five minutes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You'll have other opportunities to complete your thoughts. So we're gonna move on to our prepared questions. First question, and this is gonna be, uh, Dave is gonna respond to this first. What do you expect will be the three greatest challenges facing the county during your four year term? All right, that, it's kind of looking in the, in the crystal ball, but you know, I, I started off and it's jobs. You know, I could just say jobs, jobs, jobs. Uh, that's, that's the key thing. When, you, you know, when I indicated earlier that we're losing the, that very important group of um, uh, folks that actually have jobs and, and our talent when they're leaving, we also have the lowest as a county job creation rate in virtually the entire state. You know, we're almost dead last. We create jobs at a rate of about 1.4%, about half what Santa Barbara creates. We got the same climate, pretty much the same everything. Why is Santa Barbara creating so many more jobs per capita than we are? We also have a problem with commuting. We have one of the highest percentage of our working adults that when they go to work, they're not working in Ventura. They get in their car and drive to Santa Barbara every day. Santa Barbara County, you, you about 20% of the people commute outside um, LA County, about 19%. We've got a problem, we're not creating jobs. The second is water. Obviously, we've got a, we've got a water problem. We're in a long-term situation, we've got to address it. One of the issues that I would seriously consider that the Board of Supervisors is not considering is the state water project. You know, um, that, uh, that is supported by uh, Cayagas, it's supported by all of the cities, about 75% of our water in the county of Ventura comes from state water. If we were to have a problem in, up north and there would be a catastrophic failure of one of the levees, we could be, our water could be cut off for years. I think we need to consider that. The third is obviously the economy. We've been in a, a kind of a tepid uh, expansion for years and years and uh, we could very easily see a slowdown in the next four years. So um, jobs, water, and the economy. Steve? 
Thank you. Thank you very much. First, I just want to correct one thing that uh, is out there. And this perception that Santa Barbara County um, and Ventura County and jobs. Uh, in March of 2016, they announced the unemployment rate in Santa Barbara County, 5.3%. The unemployment rate in Ventura County, 5%. So we have a lower unemployment rate. So this, this argument that there is this uh, economic disaster taking place in Ventura County, I think, just isn't accurate. But in my three priorities um, in terms of the real challenges for county government, water uh, is absolutely essential. I think that you have to have a reliable water supply for your businesses and for your residents. Uh, and I have... Uh, for, particularly for the last five years, put an enormous amount of time into that. I serve on the, the uh, Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency. I think I have uh, knowledge that is uh, as great as any other local elected official in Ventura County about what to do about that. And I hope that in a, in a setting where we have more time, I could explain all the things that I think we should do. The one thing I will point out is I made the hard decision to put a well, ban, a well moratorium on until we get new regulations in so that the existing well, well pumpers are not ha being, having their wells drawn down uh, while uh, we're trying to figure out what the rules are for how you put wells in. The second thing that I think is a real challenge here in, in Ventura County is this whole new paradigm that is out there that we have embraced. We have a remarkable Ventura County uh, environment, quality of life, and people keep trying to set the paradigm up that you have to choose. It's either business or it's this quality of life, and it's simply not the case. You can have both. You can have vibrant economic centers uh, and the final thing I would point out to you is that we need to have a transportation tax because we should invest in infrastructure and we need to know where the candidates stand on transportation, on the difference between SOAR and sustained VC, uh, and be real clear here on those kinds of issues. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Steve, this next question, you're going to be the first to answer. Which three industry segments are the most beneficial for the county to grow and what is your strategy to facilitate this growth? Thank you. Um, I'm going to identify the three. It's, it's sort of tech, biotech, uh, the whole, it, whole idea of trying to improve our broadband uh, uh, that is out there. The second one is a specialty industry that I've spent a lot of time working on, and that is uh, bicycle tourism. We have created a, a joint effort between Santa Barbara County and Ventura County to brand uh, Ventura and Santa Barbara counties as international and national bike tourism destinations. Bike tourism is one of the most profitable tourism industries that you can bring here. I'm working closely with Marlis at the Visitors and Convention Bureau to try to do that. Uh, we have specialty agriculture uh, that we can really develop to make sure that we keep ag profitable here at Ventura County. But I want to use the rest of this two minutes to talk about uh, what I'm going to do about it. I'm actively involved in all three of those things. I went back to Washington, uh, got some grant funding for us to be able to do a consortium with Ventura and Santa Barbara County to improve our broadband but the um, thing that you really need to ask yourself is what realistically can the Board of Supervisors and county government do regarding this is issue of business vitality? It is a core value of the citizens of Ventura County that we have healthy businesses and good government. And if you're an advocate of good government, you're an advocate of that core value. Um, if, you, if you really believe in that, there is not this contention that county government is anti-business or that we're passing up good ideas uh, out there. I point out that Supervisor Foy was elected on the same platform, that there were all these businesses. But during his time in office, he has evolved. You don't see him coming forward with it's this industry segment or that. Our job is to make sure that the county is run well, that the county is safe, that the county has a high quality of life so that businesses feel good about locating here. They will not come to a county that isn't safe or that doesn't have a good high quality of life or has poor infrastructure. And I'm fighting really hard for all three of those things. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, um, let me respond to a couple other uh, uh, issues. Uh, Supervisor Bennett meant it, meant, or indicated that our unemployment rate was actually uh, a little bit lower than Santa Barbara. And the reason we're experiencing that is going back to that chart. Not because we're creating jobs, it's because we're losing our working class. They're leaving. So that's how we achieve a, a lower unemployment rate. And also, going back on the water, uh, Steve talked about his moratorium on wells. Now that's just attacking one issue, okay? We're just looking at demand. 
Okay, and that's, that's how you really restrict growth. You, growth, you start uh, restricting demand. I'm looking at the supply side, and I think we need a reliable water supply, and that's why I would support uh, the Delta project. Now, going on to the, the question at hand about the industry segments, first of all, you know, government doesn't pick winners and losers. You know, we can't sit here and say these are industries I would like uh, and not like. Uh, but I think there are some opportunities, and, and the way you make that opportunity available is to look at your regulatory environment. You know, if you have a, a heavy-handed regulatory environment, not only are you going to prevent businesses from expanding, you're going to keep them from coming into Ventura in the first place, and that's my concern. So I, you know, you could look at, you know, high tech, which you know I think it's wonderful. Uh, Santa Barbara's got a lot of high tech companies. We really don't. Okay, what what is the problem? And maybe it is the regulatory environment. So I think we need to focus on that uh, to make the county um, more conducive to businesses, startups, and creation of new businesses. We obviously need to support agriculture, and there's a lot of things in agriculture that we can do that we're not doing, uh, and and you know, that, that can be uh, uh, leveraged and bring more business to the county, and possibly tourism. You know, I mean, we're a natural for tourism, and I think that's something we can promote. Thank you. Next question, Dave, you'll be the first to answer. Ventura County has been the slowest to recover economically. What do you think is holding us back, and why would your plan, and what would your plan be to catch us up with the other neighboring counties? Well, it's probably easy, you know, to figure this out as I think it's a regulatory environment. I think um, over the years we have had, uh, you know, it, we've gotten away from sign, kind of some common sense principles of running government. It's, it's to me, it's a little heavy handed. Uh, again, it's driving businesses away. We've got high housing costs. You know, it, it's hard to find a house here uh, that not only can you buy, but even to rent. Rents are going through the roof. And we've got a shortage of eligible and qualified workers. You know, it's very difficult if you're an entrepreneur going to uh, start up a company here, and I've heard it talking to a lot of folks, it's actually in some job categories hard to find people uh, because they are leaving. So we really need to address uh, the issue of creating jobs, but we also have to worry about the problem of losing uh, the, the people in their prime working area. Now, how, how would you fix all that? You know, I think you've got to adopt an economic development strategy that encourages businesses to expand and relocate into Ventura. Um, there, there is different ways you can do that. I, I hear uh, other cities doing that to endorse businesses away from Ventura. I think we need to take advantage of that to offer some opportunities to come back here. And, you know, finally, I think, you know, the hammer to always regulate and never to facilitate is really not a purpose of good government. And that's what I think we need to do. Steve. Good government comes, starts with good elections. And good elections come from a, a, an honest and frank discussion about what is really going on. Good government doesn't come from sound bites and misrepresentation in terms of what's happening. Ventura County, to suggest that Santa Barbara County is the gold standard in terms of what's going on, and to suggest that Ventura County is more regulated than Santa Barbara County. We just had a big discussion yesterday at the board about Santa Barbara County's um, regulation of the oil industry relative to Ventura County's regulation of the oil industry. Certainly they are much more regulatory oriented there uh, than we are here. We have done an enormous amount to streamline our permitting process, to make sure that our every time a county employee engages a business, they engage with how can we do this, but still at the same time strike that appropriate balance to make sure we're enforcing the state laws and the state regulations that are out there. Um, and so this election, one of the things that you'll see repeatedly said over and over again is that there's terrible things going on that it was stated that Ventura County is anti-business, and those things simply aren't true, but they are things that need to be said by some people to get elected. And I would offer to you, when you have an election like that and it's over with, you don't have a clear mandate in terms of what to do because you already have an, an economy that is out there and is doing well. You hear this thing about high housing prices. Does anybody really think that if we pave over the Oxnard Plain, we'll have low housing prices in Ventura County? Orange County tried that. They paved it over. 
Uh, they don't have low housing prices in Ventura County. You have to be more creative, and this paradigm shift that we engaged in about 15 years ago with SOAR, et cetera, is one that requires us to really be strategic and honest and, and with each other about what do we need to do to keep the dream going that we have here in Ventura County. Okay, next question, and this is staying with you, Steve. Under your leadership, describe the effort between the city of Ventura and the county as it relates to solving our homeless issue. Well, I sure wish we had more than two minutes for this particular question because it's something that I've been very passionate about and have spent an enormous amount of time on. So I'm going to highlight uh, one of the things that I'm most proud of in terms of this, co this coalition. Um, I started having myself and my staff attend the monthly meetings of the Social Services Task Force. I also started an effort to try to bring all of these various organizations and cities that work on homelessness together so that we could start to coordinate policy. And one of the things that in, through, in that effort that we came up with was, in my office, we developed this idea of a homeless prevention fund. And in 2007, we instituted it, and it was a homeless prevention fund specifically for the city of Ventura. And we ran it out of my office, unprecedented to have a county supervisor's office actually running a homeless prevention fund. And over 1,000 people since 2007 have been prevented from falling into homeless because of our homeless prevention fund that we created and we raised the money. It's a nonprofit. 100% of the money goes directly to clients. We got volunteer organizations to try to take care of all the administrative costs. Uh, the second thing that I uh, feel really good about is we brought all these groups together with a 10-year plan to, uh, to end homelessness. We created um, an organization that makes sure that we meet regularly and we coordinate policies. And I feel very good about what I've done to decrease the normal bureaucratic tension. When you have lots of different government agencies and nonprofits working together, you always get a lot of tension. And I feel like I've been the oil between all these moving parts, all well-intentioned. So the Ventura Police Department, I started to have regular conversations and meetings between them and our behavioral health department because there was tension. And things in communication have improved dramatically as a result of that. Thank you. Dave. Homelessness in the city of Ventura is a significant and serious problem. Uh, one of the things I've discovered is, you know, we are the county seat. And as a result of the county seat, we have the county government center, of course. We have the county hospital, county jail, and mental health. And what I've found is that if you're arrested in Simi Valley, the safest city in the United States, you're brought to Ventura and released into Ventura. Ventura has the highest per capita crime rate in the county. That's not a success story. If you're dealing with mental issues in Thousand Oaks, you're brought to Ventura to Hillmont and released into homelessness in the city of Ventura. I've walked the streets around, knocked on doors in, uh, around Hillmont, and there are people that actually are afraid to walk out of their house. That's not a success story. Now, I think the county has a role in this because of the policy of basically, and I don't want to use the word dumping, but I've heard it before. You know, we end up with a lot of folks on our streets that we put, on our, put the burden on our police force to resolve. And I think because of that, the county owns some of that responsibility because it is a public safety issue. Now, I'm certainly not blaming the homeless, and I'm certainly not blaming folks that have mental illness issues. But I think there is a policy at the county. It's kind of a, you know, I would call it almost a dirty little secret. You know, the city of Ventura, you know, you're not gonna hear this uh, concern in the other nine cities, but we have a problem and I think we do need to address it. And, and I think quite frankly, it's gonna result, be some responsibility at the county that has to step up and do something about it. And the biggest problem we have here is housing. Housing, housing, housing for the homeless. How are we gonna solve that problem? We've got a lot of faith-based and nonprofit organizations out there doing a wonderful job. They just don't have the funding. Possibly the county could provide that funding on annual block grants to allow them to do their job. Okay, Dave, and we'll stay with you for the next question. What is your assessment of the permitting process now? Are there areas that you would like to see improved, and how would you improve them? 
I think clearly the permitting process, I think if you, you talk to a lot of folks trying to create a business, they're very frustrated. You know, you, you go on the other side, it's a, it's a bureaucracy that you're dealing with. One of the things I've noticed in the past is, uh, as I understand it, you've got a, a couple different type of uh, permitting process. One is a ministerial. It's pretty quick, it's inexpensive, it's almost over the counter for, for uh, different projects. And the other are what's called discretionary approvals. They take a long time to get done, they're very expensive, they're subject to sequel, and they have, sequel, excuse me, and they have automatic expiration dates. One of the things that has happened over the years is projects that used to be taken care of at the ministerial level, the quick and the easy, have now been moved up to the discretionary. I have no idea why that's happened, but I believe it's at the direction, at the direction of the Board of Supervisors. That's something that can be reversed. You know, we need to take a common sense look at our whole permitting process. And also when you look at it, you know, you've got, you know, we're, you've got a situation that just happened relatively recently. You've got a county hospital. The county hospital was permitted to be built here. And then the county built it here. Now what happened is the homeowners all around weren't aware of that. It obliterated a lot of their views. They weren't part of the process. So even though we have rules we have to follow, the county didn't follow those rules. The homeowners ended up suing the county. The county lost, they appealed it. They lost at the appellate level. So I think we need to have a situation where if the residents and, and business owners are held to one standard, the county needs to be held to the same standard. Steve. Well, this is, I want to go back to my comment about good government comes from good elections. We've just had two different issues here, the homeless issue and the permitting process. They're just flat out not being represented accurately here. And that is unfortunate because it doesn't give the voters a clear idea about the real differences between the candidates. Uh, so I want to just take a few minutes, a little bit of this time here. Um, the idea that Ventura County arrest people in Simi Valley and they dump them all here in Ventura um, and that the county hospital is dumping people uh, out onto the streets, um, it, it, it's illegal. You're not allowed to do that. There are serious fines if you do that. And there has been an enormous amount of time spent on trying to coordinate our discharge policies. There are legal things that you can't do. You can't force somebody to let you transport them back someplace where, where you got them. So there are some exceptions, but this idea that, that homelessness is the result of county discharge policies is just one of those urban myths that, they, that people who want to discredit county government have to keep making. And the same thing's true with the permitting process. It completely ignores the fact that we have spent an enormous amount of time streamlining the permitting process. Um, that we now went, we went from a system that was so underfunded because of the poor county budget policies that were demanded by those narrow special, special interests. We now have proper funding and we have been able to go online. You can now get almost all of your permits online. We track all of our permitting uh, processes. We hold all of our employees accountable and we dramatically decrease the amount of time it takes. Now, now those are all things that happen when you really believe in good government. Good government is good for businesses as well as, as, well as being good for residents that are out there. Thank you. Next question, starting with you, Steve. Which two expense categories in the budget should the county increase by the greatest percent? Yeah, that's an interesting question for me because we're getting ready to vote for the budget and it sort of implies that I feel something different, you know, that we need to change the budget from what we've been voting on. Uh, in general, I think that we have done a great job uh, with our budget and we have gotten all of the department heads to be very accountable for spending their money well. Back in the old days when we budgeted by formula, particularly the sheriff and the district attorney, had very little incentive to actually demonstrate that they were spending their money efficiently. Now, because we got rid of budgeting by formula, um, we are able to hold everybody, all the department's feet to the fire. Uh, and we get, I think, maximum bang for our buck from every one of those departments. That being said, if I 
could, I would, I, I want to point out the two things that I've been pushing is probably the best way for me to answer that question. One of them is specialty, specialty sheriff services, things like more um, uh, scientists in the crime lab so that they can work that uh, crime lab down in the, D, the backlog DNA things. The other one is child protective services. When I in, came into county government, because they had this funding by formula and the powerful were getting money and the weak were not, Children Protective Services was so underfunded that the case loads were enormously high. And now in, um, we have dramatically improved that, but we still have a ways to go to get to the national standards. And I think every one of us wants to live in this special county that the Washington Post said is the most desirable place to live in the United States. And that means a high quality of life, but it also means we appropriately provide the social services to those amongst us that are the most defenseless. We're doing a great job with that right now. I'd like to do even a better job. Dave. Okay, this is, you know, from a business perspective, I looked at this and uh, which county uh, costs would we increase? To me, if the sheriff, police, and prosecutors need to be fully supported, and if that means increase the budget, I would support it. We also need to improve our roads and infrastructure. Yeah, it directly impacts um, the residents and the quality of life and, and increasing basic services. Now, how are you gonna pay for that? Under the incumbent, county spending has increased from a billion dollars a year to $2.1 billion a year. That's 4.7% compounded, which is more than twice the rate of inflation, year after year after year. We've doubled the size and cost of government. How do you get there? I would reduce every county department except the police, the sheriff, and the prosecutors by 5%. That would give us $100 million savings in year one. And with that savings, we would make sure we could fully fund the police and sheriff and, and prosecutors. We could take care of our roads and infrastructure. Instead of proposing a tax increase, which uh, Supervisor Bennett is proposing, I would, not, I would not support that. I think there's plenty of money within existing government to be able to fund those programs. And also provide the grants that I was talking about for the nonprofits, particularly here in Ventura, to be able to take care of the homeless problem. I don't believe that government should continually increase. And you know, Steve was talking about a formula. The problem I have with the formula is every year the budgets go up and up and up. And we in the private sector don't have that luxury. So public safety, number one, and a 5% uh, cut in all all, or all departments except public safety. Staying with you, Dave, a similar question. Which two county categories in the budget should the county decrease by the greatest percent? I kind of answered that. With the two categories increase, well, the increase, I said the, uh, uh, the sheriff, police, and uh, prosecutors. The question is decrease. 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 Oh, 5% everybody. You know, I would, just, I would just do it like a business. business. Business people out there have to do this every day. You know, the economy goes up and down and a 5% reduction in expenses and not, is not an, an extraordinary thing to ask a person to do. And I think it can be uh, done at the county level. So I'm not gonna pick and choose which department, I'm just going to say we're gonna cut it 5%. Steve. Well, finally, I think we have the clear distinction that I've been, been trying to ask for. That is budgeting by formula. That's not saying, my gosh, we can't cut foster care program by 5%. We can maybe cut over here. We're supposed to, you know, it says, I'm not gonna make a decision. That's exactly what you elect a county supervisor to do, to be so close and so passionate about every one of these programs that they know where you could or couldn't cut if you actually, actually have to. So that is the old formula. And when I said at the beginning of, of my comments, I'm afraid we're going back to the old days, that's it. The old formula was give public safety anything that it wanted essentially with 4088. Don't ask questions about that and then just slice everybody else. And that's what gave us the 
unsustainable budget that we had at that point in time. So that, we finally have a clear distinction, and I appreciate hearing that he doesn't support the transportation tax. There is no, this idea that county government has been, you know, sort of a tax and spend situation is just doesn't recognize accurately the unique role of county government. We don't go around and raise taxes. We don't raise income taxes. We don't even get to raise property taxes. We don't do any of that stuff. There hasn't been a tax proposal except for this one-time regional sales tax that all the cities and the county are trying to support to improve infrastructure. So we have somebody who says, I'd rather not improve the infrastructure of Ventura County. I'd rather have the roads get even more congested, but I'm pro-business. Uh, I don't think those two match up, and that's why so many chambers of commerce are supporting the half-cent sales tax. But you don't want to go back, I think, to the old days of budgeting by formula, which is exactly what um, Mr. Grau has just offered as his solution uh, to cutting the budget. I know I didn't say what two things I, I, I would decrease. Uh, if I had a chance, I'd, I'd try to decrease our expenditures on workman's comp. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. And then our final prepared question, uh, we'll start with Steve. What special expertise do you possess that you feel would make you an excellent supervisor? I have a passion for good government and trying to make government, local government actually work. And that is an art form when you think about particularly county government. We receive all kinds of mandates and policies that we have to follow and most of the regulations that we have to follow are written at the state. Uh, I want to make county government work because it is the one way and the closest way that the people of Ventura County can continue this remarkable experiment in both good government and in trying to do it differently than the way we've done it in the rest of Southern California. So I, I recognize out there that um, a passion for good government is infectious. I recognize out there that the 8,000 county employees that are out there do need to really have a mission uh, and a belief that what you do um, is really important to the community that you serve. I also understand that negativism and just sort of painting everybody with a broad brush is not the way to get things done. Uh, and so I think the unique thing I bring forward is to that I've brought real problem-solving skills, not sound bites, to Ventura County's problems. When we had urban sprawl, I brought a SOAR. When we had uh, unlimited campaign contributions to county supervisors, I eliminated that. When we had budgeting by formula, I eliminated that. Um, when we have this water crisis, I've come up with a whole series of things. When the city of Ventura uh, was in a crisis back in the 90s, I served on the Citizens Water Advisory Committee. Uh, I think I've had practical legal solutions to many of Ventura County's toughest challenges. Dave. Yeah, that was, uh, that was interesting. Um, now I know what budgeting by formula is. I never quite knew what that was, and it's really the way you do it in the private sector. Um, you know, when I, when I said that I think we can cut by 5%, I don't think that's unreasonable. I don't look at that as a formula. I look at that as a target, a goal. Any, any uh, company or the county of Ventura, good government does not necessarily mean government that grows at twice the rate of inflation. I think we need to have some fiscal responsibility at our, at our government level. And what, what do I bring? You know, obviously my background in business, I think I would bring that fiscal responsibility. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm a businessman. I know how government can crush jobs. I know how to create jobs. And also, you know, I'm not an expert on bureaucracy by any means, and I'm not a career politician. You know, I'm, this, this is, uh, I've never run for office before, and I think I could bring a completely different perspective, and really a pro-business perspective. Um, you know, Steve and I have disagreed on a lot of stuff over time, uh, but we have agreed on one thing, and that was term limits. You know, term limits were voted in by the voters a few years ago, and a resounding majority uh, wanted uh, term limits of 12 years for a supervisor. Incumbents were uh, excluded from that, so Steve would like to run 20 years. You know, I, I just think that's, that's against the will of the voters, and I think that was very clear. So I would bring, I think, with my business background, uh, 
you know, budgeting expertise and strong support of public safety, uh, something that's needed for this county to help create jobs in the private sector and keep our young folks from leaving uh, and losing our middle class. Thank you. Now, in order to keep our program on time and to respect everybody's expectations for our schedule this morning, we're going to go ahead and move to our closing statements from each of our candidates, and we'll begin with Dave. You know, I think um, right now it's, it's time to consider a fresh approach and time to think about we, what we as a community are for. You know, it's time to recognize what our own economists have been saying, that Ventura County has been frozen by political formaldehyde. And for true sustainability, change must occur. It's time to bring back an even-handedness to our government. The hammer to always regulate and never to facilitate is not the purpose of good government. I offer a change. I think my business executive experience is founded in collaboration and a commitment to successful outcomes. As a leader, I know how to be for something and not against. And I would certainly appreciate your support on June 7th. Thank you. Steve. We have a remarkable experiment going on here in Ventura County. Uh, and we are trying to do it different than the rest of Southern California. And I don't think we got to this very good spot by being formaldehyde in terms of local government, by being close to good ideas. Mr. Grau talks about wanting fresh new ideas and change. I feel very strongly, more strongly now than before this uh, forum began, that the change he wants is to go back to the old days where a narrow, powerful special interest controlled Ventura County. And that was a formula of just what we heard, and that is in, get $100 more million dollars to public safety, even though we haven't heard the clamoring from our sheriff or our district attorney over and over again. We haven't heard that as we've adopted our budgets. Where you cut the budgets of all of those who are the most voiceless. But it's also going back to a day when campaigns were financed by those narrow special interests that had the most to profit from urban sprawl. If you look at the campaign reports of the two of us, there's a huge difference. Mr. Grau's primary campaign supporters are those people that will benefit from urban sprawl. And in the last five years, there's been a resurgence of that old guard that's been frustrated and wants to get back into their position of dominance. They, they for a long time, controlled the majority of the Board of Supervisors. And I think that if you accept that kind of money consistently over and over again, um, then you are going to have difficulty actually pushing for the good government policies that have made us unique and have changed us for the last 15 years. So I would offer instead of the, it's time for a change, that that really is an argument, it's a time to go back to that old guard where you are not clear about where you stand on SOAR or sustained VC, you kind of cloud those issues, get yourself into office, use that money of those people that profit from urban sprawl, uh, and then uh, you instead ignore or misrepresent the issues so that people don't realize that now, more than ever, we need experienced leadership that knows how to tackle our water problem, how to tackle the paradigm challenge out there of trying to show people that there is a way for Ventura County uh, to have SOAR and still have economic prosperity. And that means that, you know, I, I get arguments constantly from environmentalists that say, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't expand our, our road structure because that leads to urban sprawl. That's the old thinking that was out there. That was just as bad as the old guard thinking that I talked about. But we have this interesting thing. What we have to do if we want to move forward is we have to, as leaders, lead. And that means sometimes going to your base and telling them, you need to change your thinking on this. I go to environmentalists regularly and 
say, we need this transportation tax increase. We can have both. Because of SOAR, we can protect our open spaces and agricultural land, and we can have good transportation corridors between our various urban centers that are out there. That's the kind of leadership that we need, not leadership that says, you know what, I'm from the Taxpayers Association, I never support a tax increase no matter what. That's the kind of leadership that we get that you just say, hey, I'm going to lead not by pragmatism, not by what makes sense, but just by uh, formula, just by soundbite. Let's do a 5% across the board. I can't think of anything that's a more dramatic example to walk in as hard as we have worked to try to meet the needs of foster children. And we just, they cut the foster children uh, the foster family recruitment program back in the 1990s so they could continue to fund more and more for public safety. And as a result, we had a de huge decline in the number of foster homes in Ventura County between 1990 and 2000. We've reversed that decline, right? And we put back in uh, a foster family recruitment, uh, some people to do that. To go backwards and cut those programs uh, just because that is sort of the business way to do that or that's the formula way to do that or that's the ideological way. So I want to leave you with this. We need pragmatic leadership of Ventura County that makes it work. When that foster kid presents at 4.30 in the afternoon a disaster, you don't get to talk ideology. You have to have a county government that where there's 8,000 people that believe in the mission and really want to make it work and make county government work for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's give our candidates a round of applause. Of course, again, we'd like to thank the Ventura Improv Company for hosting us this morning. And thank you all for coming. There are, of course, additional uh, coffee, muffins, etc. Help yourself to those on the way out. And thanks for being here. Have a great day. Thanks, Dave.